Today's topic for our interview is risk evaluation. Two authorities that could be competing for the risk evaluation Super Bowl are the US Environmental Protection Agency and the European Chemicals Agency. But of course, this is not a competition. It's all about knowing the risk of using chemicals. Nowadays, the hazardous properties of chemicals are assessed to see what actual risks there might be for human health and the environment. A game changer. It is my pleasure to discuss how risk assessments by industry are evaluated by the authorities with Stala Henry and Claudia Carlon. Stala is director of the EPA's risk assessment division for chemicals and Claudia Carlon, the head of unit in the evaluation directorate of the European Chemicals Agency. Ladies first, Tala, can you in short share the first experiences of the new risk evaluation process under the amended TOSCA? Just in the first year alone, or as far as the risk evaluation process goes, we were um, instructed or required to establish a process by which we conduct these risk evaluations. So another provision was within six months of the law going final, we were to identify and begin risk evaluation on 10 chemicals. So in December of 2016, we did in fact announce what the ten, first 10 chemicals that we would um, be evaluating risk for were. We have to, within six months of initiating a risk evaluation, publish out to the public a scope for the risk evaluation. We did publish a scope document outlining what we would consider in the risk evaluation for all 10 chemicals. You mentioned uh, conditions of use. Are all conditions of use uh, evaluated for these chemicals? In short, we proposed to be all-encompassing, but in the end we thought that it would be most pragmatic to be able to um, do some selection in order to focus on the greatest risks. I understand that um, EPA sometimes has concerns about the reasonable foreseen conditions uh, associated with new chemicals uh, and they will be addressed by SNRs. Can you explain that? If we have concerns for other uses that are not part of that particular manufacturer's notice, we think that we can use a SNR, which is a significant new use rule. That rule says if anyone else or even the same manufacturer wishes to um, use this chemical for another use, a new use, then they come in with a new PMN and, and just at that time would we do the full quantitative evaluation. For uh, Europe, eh, then the risk assessment starts with industry. And after that, uh, uh, ECHA starts reviewing their evaluation, their assessment. Can you tell a little bit how that works? And it is the registrant in the first place that perform a risk assessment in the form of a chemical safety assessment to ensure that all the uses of the substance throughout the life cycle of the substance take into account the condition of use and the risk management in place are safe. This chemical safety assessment can be assessed by the authorities uh, for instance, when uh, we check the compliance with the information requirement of the registration, but more in-depth in substance evaluation, where the member state, with the coordination of ECA, they verify whether there are risk concerns that have been not captured or clarified by the registrant, and they can ask for the information for that purpose. The risk evaluation um, uh, and assessment plays a crucial role in the substance evaluation. Um, what have been the main findings so far uh, doing these evaluations? Substance evaluation is progressing quite well. We have started around 240 evaluation uh, so far. Not surprisingly, in most of the cases, uh, we have requested further information, further experimental testing. This is what substance evaluation is for. And uh, it takes a, a while uh, to perform this testing. This is why uh, uh, about uh, 75 substance evaluations have been concluded so far. Can you both share your insight how your organization is prioritizing which chemical substances need to be evaluated? So in June of 2017 we did publish out um, in a rulemaking the regulations that outline our prioritization process. There were certain criteria that um, needed to be included in this prioritization process and they are very much what the world over have used um, time and again in, in any uh, prioritization scheme. So potential hazards, potential exposures, consideration of persistence and bioaccumulation, um, the production volumes and so forth. Under which the uh, prioritization is flexible and uh, transparent, at least it is what we aim uh, to. 
We start uh, from an IT screening of all the registration database and then uh, the substance that uh, are shortlisted are submitted to an expert uh, screening uh, in collaboration with member states. We consider both hazard and exposure information, both information provided by the registrants and uh, external sources of information. And, uh, in this respect, uh, we are employing uh, QSAR prediction, but also looking at information from other regulatory framework. EPA has chosen 10 work plan chemicals, but there is also the option that industry nominates chemicals for uh, evaluation. Uh, why would industry do that? I am not an industry representative. I think they would be in the best place to um, tell you why they might proactively do that. What I can say is to date there have been two such requests. Uh, these were two chemicals that were identified as persistent bioaccumulative and toxic on our 2014 TOSCA work plan. And the new TOSCA has a provision um, under section 6H to take those which were identified as PBTs as we refer to them and expedite the risk uh, management um, activity around them to skip over the risk evaluation process and move on. So in the case of two of these chemicals, the manufacturer did in fact request. Thank you for providing your valuable insights on risk evaluation. In the last decades, we have seen many important game-changing regulations in relation to hazard and risk assessment, and probably more will follow. So stay on top of your game.